Hey guys, for today's video, we're going to be freshening up my client's blonde hair, but instead of doing an all-over bleach and tone, which she previously had, we're going to be giving her this really pretty blended blonde. And if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at Modern Blonde by Christy. All right, here's my client's before again, super grown out, super heavy line of demarcation. Um, before we start the service, I need to do a strand test. She sat for about 15 minutes and her hair pulled pretty fine. I wasn't too worried about it, so let's get into the service. I'm going to start with using my Schwarzkopf Blonde Me with 20 volume and Olaplex. A lot of people say that you experience swelling with this. I always water mine down a little bit, just like spray a little bit at the bottom, mix it in just to thin it out a little bit. And that helps me prevent swelling and also doesn't like reduce the lift at all. When I do my sectioning, I usually just pin the hair aside and go along the way i don't ever do like four steady like quadrants i always like work my way around the head depending on how the hair is processing how thick the hair is and like how fast the service is going um you'll see before i finish the back of the head i'm going to move to the front around the hairline so i just kind of jump around depending on how the service is going i never like do the same section for every client i kind of like to work more organically like around the head so to start, because I know that we're going to be foiling for a while for her, I'm going to start in the very back and I'm going to do her hairline pretty detailed because I want to make sure that it looks really pretty when she pulls her hair up. Some people, if they're going to do like um, a color melt or a root top or something, I usually won't be as detailed around the hairline just because we're going to go through and like tap the root and cover it up anyways. Uh, she did say she wanted to do like a root melt or a blend the roots a little bit more but my goal is because she has so much grow out and I'm not going to do like a solid blonde like we did before I'm hoping that the subsections will create a natural like shadow and we're not going to have to like do a root melt or anything so that's why I'm being more particular about her hairline so I saw Jamie Dana do this in one of her videos where she does the hairline foil this way, um, like kind of flips the foil in backwards, upside down and foil up against the head. And I tried it and this is so much better than working um, like the standard way where you're putting a foil down by the ear and you're trying to fight the ear and all that stuff, whatever. The only thing that I did different was I added a clip at the top just because it was just so hard to like hold the foil in place and whatever. So if you like flip the foil up, put a clip there to hold it in place, I feel like that helps a lot more. It frees your hand up so that way you can hold the edge of the foil down where the hairline is and like make sure you're right there how i'm holding it make sure that you're keeping the foil nice and taut to the root so this is like my favorite way to foil the hairline now you guys should try it if you haven't yet like i feel like it's such a big difference in the way that it holds it doesn't slip i feel like if i just go in with my hand and foil like down the standard way i feel like i always get slippage along the hairline and it never looks as good so this for me like really made a big difference so shout out to jamie dana like you guys go search her videos if you don't watch her she does really great videos tips and tricks for hair great advice business all that stuff so anyway so we're just going to finish up this hairline and i'm only going to do three weaves with minimal subsection on either side of the hairline and then a few foils just right at the nape of the neck I don't know how you guys feel about using boards, but personally, the older I get, I've been doing hair for probably like 20 years now, my hand gets really stiff and crampy. So I feel like if I use a board, that really helps stabilize and I'm not using my hand as much, like control the foil and all that thing, whatever. So just at the very nape when it's hard to kind of get up in there really tight and close, as I work my way like 
closer to the top of the head i don't have to use the board as much but down at the nape of the neck i definitely do and also pay attention here i'm being really cautious to try and not overlap because i know this bleach is going to swell a little bit and so i'm trying to not get close to the line of demarcation because i don't want to cause any breakage or any damage Make sure when you're doing colors like these that you're leaving little pockets of depth for dimension in the hair, especially when clients are wanting to have a little bit more shadow or dimension or, you know, if somebody is wanting like a super solid, heavy, bright, blonde, little dimension like to none, then I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this. Or if somebody has a budget that we're trying to stay within, um, like don't go in there and pack the foils in back to back to back. But I always recommend going in diagonally. You can see there that I'm going to leave like a little triangle of dimension. And that's going to allow for helping the service go along a little bit faster. If you're working within a budget, you're not going to pack the foils in right on top of each other and you're going to stagger the foils a little bit more. That will make this back se section go a lot quicker. Normally, if I was packing in foils back to back, this would easily take me like an hour to do this back section. But because we're going in and she wants to be more like lived in and not super like solid bright blonde, I want to say this back section only took me like 35 minutes, which is really good for me. I don't know about y'all. I'm kind of slow, but um, that really helped me to save on some time and be able to spend more time where it matters she wants to be really like obviously really light pretty bright blonde but have some dimension and rootiness in the hair so i'm gonna focus that more on the very top and the sides and around her face and throughout the bottom like the nape of the neck area like who cares? Like, it's fine if you leave a little bit of dimension in there unless they're trying to be solid. So for me, that's why I like leaving those little bits of extra depth and dimension in the back of the hairline. So I'm just going to continue going diagonal, diagonal, and then straight across, diagonal, diagonal, straight across, and work my way up the head until I get to this point right now where... Because we're getting to the top section of the head, I want to make sure that I'm packing the foils in a little bit closer together because I don't want her to feel too dark in the crown area or say, you know, if the hair kind of parts and has a cowlick in the back, then it can split the hair open and it can look a little bit too dark back there if you don't put enough foils in. So in this area, I'm going to start putting like the foils in a little bit closer together and making sure that we're giving her lots of extra brightness in this area area where kind of down below all that hair is going to be falling on top of it you're not going to see like the roots and how bright they are as long as the ends look really nice and bright and everything blends perfectly together that's really all that we care about All right, remember I said at the beginning that I don't really plan my quadrants, like my sectioning. I kind of go however I feel during that time of the application. So right about now, I'm getting close to needing to refill my bleach, but I'm not quite yet done with my bowl. So I'm going to take this time here pretty soon to use the rest of my bleach around the front of the hairline where I know that it's been sitting for probably like by the time I'm done with this, what did I say? Like 35 minutes or whatever. So this bleach has gotten pretty weak at this point. So I'm going to feel safe that I can go around her hairline with this bleach. I'm not, I don't want to use like a fresh bowl of bleach and go around the hairline because that hair is going to lighten up really quickly. It's going to over process. So if I'm going around the hairline with an older bowl of bleach, I don't have to worry about it sitting there and know that it's going to like be safe and not damaged or anything like that. So in a few minutes, you'll see me move to the front. I'm going to leave this back section just pinned behind and leave it there. So that way, when I come to the back, after I'm done with the hairline foils, I'm going to get a fresh bowl of bleach and hit this back section. So that way, this can have like an opportunity to have a fresh bowl of lightener and to get the best lift possible.
I mean, is she the cutest? Like she totally is. So we're going to go through and do a heavy foil around the front of the face. And I like to do my weaves vertically because I want to make sure that they blend really nicely with the hairline. I want to make sure that she doesn't have any heavy line of demarcation. I'm doing some really fine baby light weaves. These are really fine thin foils that I'm doing right now with minimal subsection. And that's going to help her feel like as if the sun naturally lightened her hair around her face. I don't like going up around the sides of the head horizontally because that creates more streaks and lines in the hair. Especially when they pull their hair back like in a ponytail, you're going to see a lot of lines in the hairline. So going through and doing your foils vertically this way along the hairline is just going to create a lot more softness in the highlights. You're not going to have any harsh line of demarcation. You're not going to see like any lines in the hair or anything like that. So I personally find that my clients like this a lot better when I do their foils this way because it just blends really nicely. It's much more softer than having like harsh like racing stripes, what they used to call it on the sides of the head. So Everybody has their own preference. This is just the way that I feel like my clients like theirs. If your clients like uh, having more of like a streakiness in their hair, then go ahead and foil horizontally up the side of the head if that works for your clients. So we're just going to apply at the other side and you might be able to see a little bit better the application with how fine of a section that I'm really doing. All right, we're gonna go through and do her bangs now on her hairline. I really decide on how I'm going to do their like forehead foils depending on how their hairline is. You can see that she has more, I don't wanna say a widow's peak. She doesn't have like a widow's peak, but her hairline is more of like, what is it? It comes to a point, it's like a triangle. Um, so it doesn't make sense to go even though she's straight even though she parts her hair straight down the center it doesn't make sense to do her foil straight down the center of the mohawk because i would just be getting like a few foils in that point and then i wouldn't really be getting very good coverage or else i'd have to foil really far back into um her mohawk section to even like reach across the whole like to the sides of her forehead so i like doing depending on their hairline like for hers going from the center out to the sides especially if she has this shape of a forehead if somebody had like a round or like straighter forehead then you could go just straight across but for a hairline like this i think it makes more sense to go from the center to the sides and you can see here that she's going to have great coverage all the way around her hairline a lot of things that blondes complain about is that um, like you'll see here, this foil is going to meet the center, like temple foils on the sides of her head where some blondes come in and they're like, I feel like I have holes on the sides of my forehead because it's so dark because people just go straight down the, um, straight on the forehead and do their foils. It kind of creates these like dark circles, dark shadowy parts on the sides of their forehead. And when they pull their hair back, they feel like they have brightness on the like around the temples and just straight down the forehead area, but then at the sides of their forehead, they feel like they're really dark. So I like doing it this way because I feel like I have really good coverage. They're gonna have even brightness all the way around their hairline. When they pull their hair back, they're not gonna feel like they have these dark like holes on the side of their head. So that's what we're gonna do for our hairline foils. Now I've gone and remixed like fresh bowl of bleach. So we're gonna go through and finish our foiling in the back to give it like the best opportunity to get the best lift. Um, I'm not really worried about the bleach underneath that kind of had gotten a little 
like the bleach had sat for a while it wasn't like a fresh bowl as i got to the top of my very very first section that i was doing because that's going to be processing for a while so it's still going to get good lift these foils that are sitting on top of it are going to help also incubate it to create a little bit of heat to help it uh get better lift even though the bleach wasn't like super fresh so this is all going to even out at the same time and it's gonna lift evenly i'm gonna keep going through and checking to make sure because this is going to be sitting for a little bit longer and i want to make sure that we're not having any damage or it's not over processing so i don't show that a lot in my videos i do when the whole foil is done but usually I don't show during the process that I'm going through and checking, but some colors, some highlights, you do an application. Like sometimes an application might be four hours. You better go back there and check to make sure you're not over processing and pull foils if you need to. So just because I'm not showing that in the video doesn't mean I'm not doing that. I just wanted to throw that out there. So we're just gonna finish putting these foils in the back section and then we will start working on the sides. Okay, now we're on to the sides and we're just going to be doing straight up the side. These aren't going to look streaky or stripey or anything when she pulls her hair back, even though we're going like horizontally up the side of the head in these little areas. And that's because when she pulls her hair back, the hairline foils are going to lay on top of this. So everything's still going to blend good. So doing like horizontal foils up the side of the head isn't going to cause like any streakiness or anything. Everything is still going to blend really nicely. When I'm working my way closer to the top of the hairline, I'm sorry, to the top of these sections, I'm going to start incorporating slices because I want to make sure she's a little bit brighter up top. And if you have a straight line of demarcation from like somebody that has grown out an all over bleach and tone, if you just go through with a super heavy amount of weaves, you're going to have a hard time eliminating that line of demarcation. Like you'll see at the end of this, like you can still see where her line of demarcation is. I'm just going to be real. Um, unless you go through and add like some darker through the ends of the hair, which we didn't want to do. So go, you need to go through and add some like slices to try and eliminate that line of demarcation a little bit better. So just throwing that out there, we did have a budget to stay within. So that being said, like sometimes you can only do so much within a service, depending on what your client's budget is. Um, her, this was like a present for her and her budget was between like three and 400 tops. So I wanted to respect that budget and not go over. So I wanted to make sure that I could do what I could within that budget to try and like make it look at its best without like having to do a whole bunch of additional steps like um how people will want a color melt or a root shadow and sometimes that can add you know depending on what you do that could add like 50 to 100 extra dollars to the service so that's why i'm trying to use her natural hair as like the root shadow color and to use that as like the blending tone instead of having to go in there and like use an artificial color to blend the hair. I want to make sure that I'm doing that as I'm foiling her hair and keeping that in mind throughout the whole service. So that's why you're going to see me start doing like uh, weaves and like slice slices, baby lights. Like I'm going to kind of incorporate different types of foiling through this top section to try to get it to blend as best as possible.
Also, I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'm just not recording it because that's going to be too repetitive and you don't really get as good of a view. So I'm just going to show you this view from over on this side. But can we talk about pricing really quickly? Some people say like, let your price be your price and just do the service and what you charge is what you charge. But I disagree with that. Like, yes, let what you charge be what you charge and don't like change what you charge in the service. You know, if your client's like, well, I'm not willing to pay that. Well, then, go, OK, go somewhere else. But at the same time, services can be so crazy. And a foil is not a foil anymore like it was 15 years ago. No one's going to come in here anymore for just a full foil and pay $150. That doesn't exist anymore because now we have like a full foil and a tip out and we don't want subsections and we want baby lights and we want a foliage so it's back home so it blends really good and we want to color melt and we need to tone it like three different things or whatever so like it's not a full foil anymore even if it was a full foil somebody still wants like a money piece which that's a lot of extra detail than like a standard full foil so make sure please that you're talking to your clients about this do not feel uncomfortable about it and if a client says oh i don't care it's not a, oh i'm not worried about it no worry about it because i've had somebody say that to me and then i told her don't say that because if you if you want to really go blonde and your hair's down to your butt and super thick this could easily be like six to eight hundred dollars and she was like oh okay yeah no i definitely don't want to pay that all right good let's talk about it and it doesn't matter what your budget is like let me know if it's two hundred dollars if it's four hundred eight hundred like i can work with whatever your budget is and make sure that I stay within that budget. So just please be clear with your clients before you start the service. Don't feel bad about it. It doesn't need to be awkward. You just need to have the conversation so that they have an idea ahead of time that, okay, if this, this, this is what you want, this is how much it's going to be. But if this is your budget and you're wanting these things, then maybe we don't do a super full foil. Maybe we like do some bigger subsections in between. Maybe we like try to back comb your hair and do a foliage to create the look of a shadow root instead of actually going through it and doing a shadow root. So just there's ways to go about it to like uh, have a balance between what the client wants versus like what you're going to charge to meet in the middle. So just have the conversation. It's totally like I used to feel awkward and uncomfortable about it. But when I realized talking about it beforehand, it eliminates the fear at the end of the service when you're like, oh my God, I'm going to charge them like $500. Like you already have a budget. You don't have to feel bad about it. So anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. So I've been checking the foils. Sorry, I've been talking um, at the end of like the last 15 minutes, sometimes I will reapply or blast the foils with heat and then put a towel on just the top and like clip it up there just to let it finish processing and get past that like level nine if you're stuck and not lifting all the way. So we're going to pull all of the foils out now. You can see that the ends of her hair are kind of stuck at like a level nine. I'm trying to comb it through the ends, but I'm realizing I'm going to have to do a bleach wash. So this is what we're doing right now. Just bleach. Um, I'm using just 20 volume, but I'm also going to put a lot of water in it and then also a whole bunch of like shampoo. So we're going to do like a soap cap. So that's going to sit through her ends right now for what was it like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. And I've been keeping an eye on it to make sure that it's not over processing. But I washed her hair, had Olaplex in it like this isn't just straight bleach that I'm putting on her ends. It's got a whole bunch of shampoo in it. So it's really just going to blast through the ends. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me very well. Um, I'm about to do my toner for my client and she had a pretty warm level nine through the ends of her hair. So she's just finishing up her bleach wash just for like the last few minutes while I make her toner. So I asked her if she wants her blonde to be like a warm blonde, a cool blonde, an ashy blonde or just like a bright white blonde. And she says that she doesn't really want it necessarily like ashy or cool, uh, that she just wants it to be like as bright of a blonde as possible. So I'm going to tone her mainly with like half 10 NB and half 10 V by Paul Mitchell, the Demi. And I want that V in there to help counteract like any warmth that we have. 
but also I have the 10 NB to prevent it from over toning and just keeping it nice and bright. If you use too much like V or PA or just ashier tones, like it's just gonna grab super ashy. So I've found that my favorite toner to get just like a really nice bright, like I when I say icy, I don't mean like cool or ashy, but just like that crisp bright blonde. So 10V plus the 10NB is my fam favorite formulation for just like a nice, really super bright one. I'm going to add just a little smidge of the 9PA, and that's because she does have a little bit of that level 9 left through her ends. I'm trying to lift it right now, but you know, I don't want to risk her hair and cause any damage. And just in case we don't get a, as much lift as I'm wanting to, I'm going to throw just a smidge of that level 9 in there just to tone out any level nines that might be left in the hair. So that's what we're going to tone with today. All right, so that's half and half of the 10V and 10NB and just like a little smidge of the 9PA. And this will sit, I wanna say like about 15 minutes or so, just keep an eye on it and make sure that it's like not gonna overtone you'll see that like her money piece is sitting out i don't run that through until like the very like last few minutes because i want to make sure that that stays nice and bright now her ends are a little bit warmer so i do have it through the ends but just like right through the top like of her hairline i don't have that sitting there quite yet All right, moment of truth, look at her hairline. You can see how blended that is and she doesn't have like any streakiness, stripiness in her hair. Everything just blends really nicely. As I pull her hair back, you can see that it just looks as if the sun naturally lightened her hair if she has her hair pulled back in a ponytail. You guys, this lighting is so warm. I swear her hair is not this warm, but this is what it looks like straightened. You can see that there's still like a little bit of a line of demarcation, but it blends for the most part. I also asked her, do you want me to go through and like use a root shot or anything? She didn't want to. She was happy with the way that it looked. So we didn't need to do that. Everybody was asking me, what am I using for my curling iron? It's Jay-Z Styles, the J-Wave curling iron. I love this one. It's got a long barrel. So it's great for clients that either have long hair or have extensions and you can set the temperature. So all you blondies out there that can't have super high heat because it's going to discolor your blonde hair, nothing over 350. This is the curling iron for you. All right, we're gonna comb this curl out and show you the underneath. I'm gonna pull her hair up so you can see how nice and blended the underneath looks. That's like the perfect like ponytail like highlights underneath there. Lots of dimension, blends really nicely into her hairline and no like heavy streakiness or anything. Everything just blends really, really pretty. So we're gonna finish combing this out and get some good after pictures. All right. Ugh, look how cute she is. Shut up with your cute curtain bangs. I can't take credit for those, you guys. I didn't give them to her. She came in with those curtain bangs. She's cute. All right, so you can see because we added those slices in the top area, like how much that really blends with that line of demarcation. It's not too heavy of like a blonde. It blends really nicely. She still has like a soft shadowy color in there, but it blends really nicely with like the previous blonde that she had. There's her before again, like really heavy dark roots and then here's her after it blends really nicely don't forget you guys you can follow me on instagram these are from my instagram stories modern blonde by christy and here is her after look how cute i love the pieciness of those blondes that you can see because of the slicing and weaves there's lots of dimension with some like bolder pieces of blonde in there so total five hours 365 dollars um so this is the finished result she wanted something blended with a little bit of shadow. I'm glad that her natural hair worked to be her own shadow without having to add one. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time.